Hi, everyone. Uh, welcome to my lecture. Uh, my name is Watano. I am Dean of the Graduate School of Engineering and the uh, School of Engineering. Today, I would like to talk about powder technology, which is an uh, academic field of study about powder. Okay, so let me start with this slide. This slide indicates industrial application of powders. As you know that, in our daily life, we used many powders such as toner, paint, pharmaceuticals, detergents, ceramics, electronics, foods, cosmetics, and advanced composite materials. It is not too much to say that without powder, our life is impossible. However, a powder shows very unique behaviors. Uh, let me explain about this. You know, when we accumulate powder with pleasure, it behaves as solid. In this case, interaction between powders is large static friction. Once accumulated powders receive large external forces such as uh, earthquake or something, you know, the powder flows like fluid. In this case, we can observe liquefaction or avalanche. And the uh, interaction between powders is kinetic friction. And when powders are suspended in air, like a smoke, powders behave as gas. So powder is regarded as the false phase next to solid, liquid, and gas phases. And the powder's behavior is very complicated. So I'd like to discuss uh, what makes powder so complicated, okay? As you can see that, this is a fluid. Fluid is homogeneous and continuous. And the characteristics of fluid can be described by the parameters of temperature, density, and viscosity. And these parameters are easily measured by using some sensors. This is a powder. Powder is heterogeneous and discrete. Discrete is very important. It means that each powder behaves independently. And also, between powders, there is an interaction such as friction, energy dissipation. These things make powder so complicated, okay? In reality, size of powder is not uniform. Powders always have size distribution, something like this. So if you have a chance to purchase powders, you need to specify median diameter and also size distribution. Otherwise, you cannot get your desired product. And also, powders have a different shapes, such as spherical, cubic, needle, plate, and so on. So, powders are very, very complicated. So, we need to understand the behavior of powders. Otherwise, it's very difficult to process powders. Powder technology was born to understand the powder behaviors. Powder technology is an academic field of study which deal with formation science and mechanism, handling and processing technology, design and control of surface properties, and development of equipment and sensor. Also, powder technology deal with the troubleshooting as I explained, there are so many powder processing. In reality, if we want to make some powder product, we need to use several processing. For example, we need to use a milling, mixing, agglomeration, and drying and something. So 
we need to consider how to combine different kinds of powder processing in the manufacturing. Okay. Okay, so actually, there are so many products about powders. And also, we have so many applications of powder in industry application. I would like to introduce some of the powder application. Today, I would like to pick up the two applications. One is a cosmetic, the other is a pharmaceutical drug, okay? So let me explain about formulation of powder foundation. The powder foundation consists of a lot of powders, color pigments, filler, fine powder, and a composite material. For example, for color pigment, we use different kinds of oxid. And for filler, this can be used to increase the usability or finish. In this case, we use talc, mica, cellulose, silica, and calcium carbonate. And for looser correlation or pore correction, fine powders are used. And for composite material, for UV protection, titanium dioxide or zinc oxide are well used. And for skin care, we use vitamin C derivative and so on. Anyway, powder foundation need to be used a lot of powders. Okay. In discussion of the cosmetic, we need to understand the optical behavior of skin. Okay. So when we have incident light, and if the incident light go to the surface skin, only 5% of the incident light is reflected, and the rest of the light go inside the skin. And 40% of the light is absorbed, and the rest of the 50% come out from the skin again. And when you get aged, the number of melanin increased, and this melanin absorbs light, leading to decrease in refraction light. So due to the melanin, the skin color becomes dark. So the very important thing is we need to increase surface reflective light that also we need to increase the reflection light here. And let me think about uh, skin surface roughness. From the left hand side to the right, it's uh, 20s, 30s, 40s. As you can see that surface roughness increased a lot when you got aged. However, uh, as I said before, it's very important to have a smooth surface of the skin. So this is a young skin. It's a smooth surface with shell ditch. In this case, you have wide angle reflection against incident light. And in this case, the skin becomes very bright. However, when you get aged, the surface is very rough with deep ditch. In this case, we will see a narrow angle reflect and it becomes a shadows on your skin. So we need to use some of the powders to cover the surface of the skin. The here, for a young skin, you need to use the fine particles to cover the surface of your skin. However, for the aged skin, you know, there is a big pores. So you cannot use a small or fine powders because you need a lot. So in this case, you need to have a larger particle. 
and you need to cover the surface of the skin. This is the picture of your skin, okay? Before and after the surface treatment. You can see that by covering the skin using the spherical particles, you can see the brighter color of the skin like this. Also, when we look at the shape of the powders, it's very interesting. You see, if we use a sheet-shaped particle, we have regular reflection. This causes the loose effect. However, if we use the spherical particles, light reflection is like this. We'll see a diffusion reflection, and we can give a foggy image. So what I want to say is uh, don't use a flat-shaped powder for your forehead. Otherwise, it's too bright, OK? In our case, you better use a sweater cap particles for your forehead. You understand what I mean, OK? And next topic is application of powder to a pharmaceutical drug. As you know that uh, in a pharmaceutical industry, we have many uh, drugs with different functionalities. So today, I would like to pick up one or two applications about uh, powder. And one is a cancer treatment, and the other is a improvement of drug dissolution speed. OK, so let me explain how to prevent the side effect. Uh, this slide shows uh, mass transfer through the capillary vessels. cells. You know, this is a capillary beth cell, and diameter is about five microns. And also, capillary beth cells have small pores that are size is about 50 nanometers. And through these pores, oxygen, nutrients, waste, and other substances are transported. However, capillary vessel and cancer tissue have pores larger than 100 nanometers because the growth rate of cancer tissue is very fast. So one of the ideas is to use this size change. As I said before, the normal tissue has pore size around 50 nanometers, and the cancer tissue pore size is more than 100 nanometers. So if we can make anti-cancer drug having a diameter between 50 nanometers and 100 nanometers, we can just deliver the anti-cancer drug to pathological blood cell only. So we cannot transport the drug to a normal blood cell. In this way, we can prevent the side effect. OK, it, the so-called EPL effect. It is enhanced permeability and retention effect. And it is expected that we can prevent the side effect when we use anti-cancer drug. And another application is drug. So let me explain about water insoluble drug. Nearly 60% to 90% of new drugs that are currently being developed exhibit poor solubility. And the solubility of insoluble drug is less than one microgram drug per one milliliter water. Can you imagine how small it is? OK. This means only one tablespoon of drug can be dissolved in 20 ton water in tank track. So you can imagine how small amount can be dissolved into water. So it's, it's, it is very important to improve 
the dissolution property, otherwise drug cannot be used. So this picture shows the effect of particle size on the dissolution rate. Original drug is about eight micrometers, and we used the grinding technology to reduce the particle size down to 24 microns and 0.2 microns. As you can see, it's obvious if we decrease the particle size, we, will ha we can have very fast dissolution rate. So this is a very promising technology to improve the drag dissolution speed. Okay. So um, this is our last slide. And thanks to the rapid advancing in computer science, we can use uh, computer simulation at our will. So most of the powder processing can be simulated by using a numerical simulation method. And I believe in near future, we can predict the product properties by feeding the powder properties and the operation parameters of the processing. We'll see. Okay, uh, due to the time limitation, I just pick up one or two applications of powder processing. If I have an opportunity, I would like to talk to you again. Anyway, thank you very much for your kind attention. Thank you.